on these types of plays, and this is kind of what I've been seeing in this market, is that we get this amazing frontside run up and no one is long it. Everyone is, um, you know, maybe trying to shore or maybe um, they're fighting it. But I see a lot of people, no one's long it until we kind of top out, we pull back a little bit. And that first pullback is when longs start to get scared and shorts start shorting. And, you know, that causes for it to kind of start going down. These bigger pullbacks are really not what you want to get long on. And I guess the reason being is because, you know, we, yes, we are going to have shorts covering into them, but most shorts are covering into these smaller pullbacks if they're trapped. Like if you have smaller pullbacks on the way up, that is telling me that, okay, yes, we have shorts trapped. Okay, yes, um, you know, we, we are in a situation where people aren't waiting to cover on a big dip. They're covering on a smaller dip because they're trapped. They want to get out right away. Um, they don't care how big the dip is. That's when I really love, you know, longing into those kind of smaller dips, right? Um, and again, so when we start to get up here, we're a bit distanced from VWAP. We have a bit of a bigger dip. There's not really a line to go long off of, as opposed to here, maybe at 54, where we kind of have this kind of first bounce area situation, as well as we have uh, what looks like red to or yeah, red to green. So when we have this kind of red to green move on volume, you know, that's going to make a lot of short stop out. When we have this kind of, uh, you know, smaller dip action, um, you know, that plus the first bounce notch, you know, we have a lot of cause for demand. Whereas up here, most shorts are already out. I'm guessing the majority have already covered. Um, and also we're in a situation where this isn't the first day of the move, right? We're a couple of days later in a situation like this. So we are gonna have excess supply from people who are stuck bag holding this thing, right? So again, that's just kind of how I feel. Um, you know, you got to be thinking like, where is shorts risk levels? Like, where are we going to get met with those breakout buyers, that excess demand, that reason for why people are forced to press the buy button? Whereas opposed to here, it's like, eh, it's not really a meaningful bounce for distance from VWAP, not something that I would want to get long on. Um, yeah, I'll just let Vic in right now. But Tom, you want to go in? Yeah, um, there's a couple things I want to go with this chart. Uh... You know, as a long bias, uh, I mean, guys, you know, the stock went from 52 to 57. I mean, it's to me, it's way, way extended already for you to go long, right? Yeah. So you probably missed the opportunity, okay? You know, like, the, like basically don't chase. And uh, I would be shorting into this and risking over this one instead of, you know, longing into the dip. Yeah. And the, I think the long, like the setup or like, a, you know, uh, the point where I like the most is this one right at the open. Okay. Uh, stock broke this support, right? You know, pretty much after this, it should have bounced back here and then it should continue to go lower, right? That's usually what we see, right? But instead of, you know, like uh, in, in, instead of it should, you know, have died down, it reclaimed back overview app, broke this high. That to me, it's like, you know, all the people who are shorting down here, they're fucked pretty much, right? Yeah. And they just want to get out basically. Yeah. And this is uh, exactly what I talk about um, in my latest video yesterday uh, on a reverse candle. On the pre-market volume as that kind of excess supply. So in a situation like Excel, we didn't really have that, right? We didn't really have people who are trapped pre-market. And, you know, we're approaching over 570. Anyone who's short is going to be dead. And I knew that. So, you know, I took a stab some 560. We started getting the volume. You know, uh, we start moving and moving and moving. And, you know, that's what I kind of liked. Um, you know, as far as this one, I'm not sure... I believe he, he went short here. He covered over the high, which is good. You know, that's good risk here. Obviously FOMO short, right? Didn't wait for the pop. Just got back in short, trying to make his money back. You know, he ends up covering down here, but bit of trading on the fly, bit of emotional. And also the broken stocks are the stocks that are broken down that were popular and are not anymore. This stock was never popular. 
Uh, it, it did not have the bag holder, nor did it have the attention. You can't rely on these stocks to pay you out as a short seller. You have to be looking for those stocks that are popular, that people are talking about at eight o'clock in the main chat saying, oh, this is a potential hot check. This is a potential. This is a potential. This could run. Or maybe it is a hot check that's broken down by the open, right? That has a ton of attention. That has those pre-market longs, you know, racing for the buy button, buying the high and chasing the tops, right? And by the time we open up, those people are now stuck. You know, there's a vast majority of people who uh, get long these things pre-market and then remember, oh shit, I have PDT rule. Well, I'm not going to sell here because I don't want to waste a day trade or I don't want to waste a this. They're making up all these excuses. And by the time it opens up, they're shitting their pants going, oh shit, oh shit. And that's where you get that supply as a short seller. And that's why we kind of get that broken down. On this chart, we just don't have that. And you can't rely on those pre-market bag holders due to the fact that there are so few. So there's not really much supply here. There's a lot of demand here and it's not a, a broken stock, right? So that's why I, uh, that's my thoughts on this one. Tom? Yeah, uh, regarding this chart, uh, like I said, uh, I just, you know, like trade zero, they have, uh, uh, you know, like medium and also large tick size. I mean, you, you could barely see the entries and exit, and, you know, yeah. from this chart. So you might want to use it, uh, you know, a little bit bigger next time, medium or large, so we can see it clearly. And yeah, regarding this tray, uh, shorting here at 560, and again, right, had a stuff right here, immediately reclaim, that's a no-no, okay? You don't want to be shorting into, I don't care if it pops back here or back into this line, I don't care. After that, I want to see what happens first, right? Ideally, after reclaim like that, if it fails right away, then yes, I will be shorting the bounds and continue to go lower. That's, you know, this trade, I don't like that much, but I like the stop. I mean, clearly he has a plan, so it's all good. Yeah. And this trade is, is, is really good too. Uh, I, I like this one because uh, of this, you know, stuff candle, right? You see? Uh, after the stuff move, uh, that person enters here and the stock did not reclaim all the way back, right? You know, like only bounce halfway and it's continuing to go lower. Yes, uh, I would say, you know, you might want to be patient a little bit with your exit. Uh, but if it was your plan to cover into this 567 uh, or 65 here, it's all good. I So the second trade, I, I really like it. Uh, you know, the first one, not so much, but I like to stop. 